Hi everyone, I'm Julia Willingham and I work with Catoosa County Extension. And today we're going to be talking about the Luna Moth on the Bug Club. Here's a short video just for you, all about bugs and what they do with Julia. Have you seen a Luna Moth? It's arguably one of the most beautiful moths in our area. They're very iconic because of their color. They can be sea foam to yellow in color and they're huge. <coughs> the Luna Moth is considered a giant silk moth. It's part of the family Saturnidae. It's called Saturnidae because it's got spots on both the forewing and the hindwing that has circles around it, kind of like the planet Saturn. Or some people think it looks like a moon, but that's up to you. So as their name might imply, they're most active during the night or in the early morning, and they're mostly found in forested areas. And in our part of North Georgia, we have two generations of Luna Moths. So the adult Luna Moth is the most easily identifiable, coming in colors varying from yellow to that light green in color, but also it has these long hind wings or these tails off of their hind wings that is also part of the identification, as well as the spots on both the hind wings and fore wings. My favorite part of the Luna Moth is their antenna. They have really cool antenna. They're very long and they're four-sided and they also look like little combs. So male Luna Moths have larger antenna than the females, but they're pretty cool if you get a chance to look at them. So a fun fact that most people don't know about the adult Luna Moth is actually it has no mouth parts. So most species in the Lepidopteran order, which are moths and butterflies, have a mouth part called the proboscis. So that is the mouth part that coils up or stretches out for most butterflies and moths will get nectar or other ways to feed. However, the adult Luna Moth doesn't have these mouth parts, and that's because it gets most of its food energy when it eats as a larva or a caterpillar. Its primary goal as an adult is just to mate and have eggs, not to eat, which is sad because I love to eat. <laughs> The caterpillar or the larval form of the lunar moth goes through many instars, but they're all bright green in color. The earlier instars or the younger instars are much smaller and they actually have a lot of hair-like spines on the top of its back. As the caterpillars get older and grow in their instars, they lose some of these hairs on their back, but they gain some red dots and a yellow side stripe on the side of the caterpillar, as well as getting much larger. But no worries about these hair-like spines. They're not venomous and these are safe to touch. However, if you are unsure if this is a Luna Moth caterpillar or some other type of caterpillar, don't touch it. The caterpillars eat on a wide variety of plants. However, northern species of the Luna Moth typically like white birch trees. And southern species, like the Luna Moths in our area, tend to prefer walnut trees, hickories, as well as sweet gum. Whenever a caterpillar is ready to become an adult, it will spin a cocoon out of the leaf of the host plant that it's feeding on. It will roll it up. Remember, this is a type of giant silk moth. Spring is when those adult Luna Moths will start to emerge in our area. So don't forget, if you would like to find a Luna Moth, some places to look would be in a forested area during the nighttime or the early morning, and also they're attracted to light. So if you wanna look at a porch light or some other light, those are some good places to look for those Luna Moths. So keep your eye out for this beautiful moth species, and if you get to see one, don't forget to look at its antenna. And that's all for now on The Bug Plug.